In the heart of Peru's Nazca Desert, one of the most mysterious chapters in ancient history is revealed, the Nazca Lines. Created by the mysterious Nazca culture between 500 BC and 500 AD, these geoglyphs depict a variety of figures, from animals to geometric shapes to something like an alien or astronaut. The images are seen in their entirety only from the sky. More precisely, from very high in the sky. Their purpose remains unresolved. Are they astronomical instruments, religious symbols, or something else entirely? Scientists speculate that the lines are linked to water sources in the desert that were important to the survival of the ancient inhabitants. But they don't give answers as to what the purpose of the figures was. There are hypotheses that the lines are part of an elaborate ceremony to summon rain or a cosmic calendar related to agriculture. The mysteriousness of the Nazca also provokes more extravagant hypotheses, such as one that asks whether they were created to communicate with alien civilizations. To this day, the Nazca lines remain one of the most mysterious artifacts of the ancient world. That's right, one of many. In this video, we'll take a peek into the secrets of some lesser known similar sites, but by no means less mysterious. Nestled in the hills of southwest France, the Lascaux Caves are a window into a prehistoric world. They are a labyrinth of underground chambers that house one of mankind's earliest known artistic achievements. Discovered in 1940, these caves are a testament to the creative spirit of our Paleolithic ancestors, and their walls are decorated with nearly 600 paintings, mostly of animals such as horses, deer, ibex, and bison, as well as predators such as lions and bears. The entrance of the caves is like a portal that takes us back in time, leading directly to the main hall, the Hall of the Bulls. Here, prehistoric artists use the natural contours of the cave walls to give life and movement to their subjects. In a dance of colors, the mighty bison and the fleeing horses are depicted in dynamic interaction, their forms accentuated by the relief of the walls. The ancient artists demonstrate a remarkable understanding of perspective and movement, which is evident in the vivid depictions of the animals in various poses and actions. Beyond the Hall of the Bulls is the main gallery, which is often likened to the Sistine Chapel of prehistory. On its ceiling is a stunning collection of paintings in which red bison form a circular motif and a black bull stands majestically against a female bison, as if caught in a moment of intense action. This gallery depicts a multitude of horses, each crafted with a high level of attention to detail. These images speak volumes about the artists and their deep connection to the natural world. The Lascaux Caves, however, are not only a gallery of ancient art, but also a source of great mystery. Bone and flint tools found in the caves suggest that early artists probably used them to etch the walls. The pigments used for the drawings contain traces of reindeer antlers, indicating high material science. Some of the depictions in the caves, such as the wounded man or the composite animal figures, continue to puzzle archaeologists and historians, and the meaning and significance remain unsolved to this day. Unfortunately, the caves had to be closed to visitors in 1963 for conservation reasons. The influx of tourists had begun to damage the delicate prehistoric paintings. In response, an exact replica, Lascaux II, was created, offering visitors an authentic experience like the original caves. Teotihuacan Deep in Mexico's Teotihuacan Valley, the ancient city of Teotihuacan often referred to as the birthplace of the gods, is a monumental testament to a civilization shrouded in mystery. Created around the 2nd century BC and reaching its zenith in the 4th century AD, Teotihuacan was a bustling metropolis and home to iconic structures such as the Pyramid of the Sun, the Pyramid of the Moon, and the Alley of the Dead. Recent genetic research has shed new light on the inhabitants of this colossal city. Researchers, using advanced DNA sequencing technologies, 
have been able to extract the complete mitochondrial genome sequences from burials performed at Teotihuacan. Despite the challenges posed by poorly preserved DNA due to the region's soil and climate conditions, they successfully mapped the mitochondrial genome of these ancient people. The DNA showed that the buried individuals belonged to haplogroups A2, B2, or D1, which are indicative of modern Native American lineages, with haplogroup A2 being the most common. This groundbreaking study shows a strong genetic similarity between the Teotihuacan people and other Mesoamerican groups, placing them in the Central Mesoamerican cluster. Furthermore, isotopic analysis performed on the same samples provides insight into their diet, revealing a high dependence on C4 plants, particularly maize, as a major food source. This is consistent with previous archaeological findings and highlights the vital role of maize cultivation in the development of Mesoamerican civilizations. The growth of Teotihuacan is marked by distinct phases known as Patlachique, Sakuayi, Mikaotli, and Cholalpan, Ototipac as Patlachique lasting from 150 BC to 1 AD, with few remains indicating permanent occupation from then. During the Tsekowai period from 1st AD to 150th AD, the first permanent settlers were established. By the end of the prehistory, the city numbered 80,000 inhabitants and stretched over 20 square kilometers. It quickly grew into a major metropolis, partly due to economic opportunities and environmental factors, such as the eruption of the Zetel volcano, which necessitated migration from other settlements in the Central Valley. Teotihuacan is organized as a giant grid. The main artery of the city is about three kilometers long and was called the Promenade of the Dead by the Aztecs because they mistakenly concluded that the platforms along the road were tombs. At the northern end of the street is the Ciudadela, the Citadel. It is a huge enclosure that houses the Temple of Quetzalcoatl, the Feathered Serpent God. The Pyramid of the Sun is the most imposing structure in the city. It was not erected on the ruins of older buildings, unlike other sites of the same period, but is a self-contained, single-phase project. A 103-meter tunnel lies six meters below the pyramid's foundations. It is a tube formed from lava from volcanic events that occurred one million years ago. The tube has branches ending in the shape of a clover carved out before the pyramid was built. The tunnel was discovered during excavations of the foundations in 1971 by Ernesto Taboada's team. Together with the individual chambers and staircases, the entire tunnel is about 220 meter long. The interior of the pyramid is made of earth fill. There are stone columns to the sides and the walls are made of stones and a mortar of lime and sand. Flaked plaster found during excavation testifies that the pyramids were painted in bright colors. It is assumed that this pyramid is one of the earliest, if not the earliest such structure in the region. Its construction has been dated to the end of the Pan occupation phase, although other archaeologists argue that it was built during the Mikayetli period from AD 150 to 300. The size of the Pyramid of the Moon is about two-thirds that of the Pyramid of the Sun. It is of considerably more complex architecture and has five levels, the first two probably being a standalone pyramid, subsequently extended with a higher rear section. Unlike those in Egypt, the pyramids at Teotihuacan were not used for tombs but for temple complexes. The zenith of this culture was in the 5th to 7th centuries when the city's population numbered between 200, 250,000 people, making it the largest city of then America. For unknown reasons, the city was abandoned and became uninhabitable in the 9th century. Three centuries later, it was rediscovered by the Aztecs, who used the temple complex for their cult rituals. The Gate to Hell in Turkmenistan's remote Karakum Desert, a fiery abyss known as the Gateway to Hell continues to burn, a blazing mystery that has puzzled researchers and observers for decades. This infernal spectacle, also known as the Dawasagas Crater, is a stunning, almost apocalyptic sight. 
a vast pit of fire that lights up the night ski, its organs shrouded in as much clear fact as dark legend. The story of the gateway to hell begins in 1971 when a Soviet drilling rig accidentally drills through an underground cave. This led to a collapse, forming a crater some 70 meters wide. Fearing the release of poisonous gases, geologists decided to burn off the gas, expecting the fire to last only a few weeks. However, contrary to their expectations, the crater has been burning unceasingly ever since, for more than half a century, earning it its dramatic nickname. The crater's flames create a stark contrast against the barren desert landscape, a spectacle that attracts tourists and explorers from around the world. The intense heat can be felt from afar, and the sight of the deep, fiery pit evokes feelings of awe and terror. In recent years, there has been discussion about the possibility of extinguishing the fire or finding ways to harness the energy it produces. However, these proposals face both technical and financial challenges. The remote location of the crater and the intense heat of the flames make any intervention unaffordable. Moreover, the site has become something of a tourist attraction, further complicating the debate about its future. The gateway to hell has also become a source of local folklore, prompting speculation about the secrets that lie beneath the surface of the earth. As night falls over the Karakum Desert, the gateway to hell glows ever more fiercely, a vivid reminder of the hidden powers of the earth. Its flames, implacable and indomitable, continue to burn like a fiery enigma in the heart of Turkmenistan, captivating anyone who looks upon the abyss. The Pink City of Petra, Jordan. Deep in the rugged mountains of southern Jordan lies the ancient city of Petra, a place shrouded in mystery and filled with history. Known as the Pink City because of the color of the stone from which it is carved, Petra is a testament to the ingenuity and craftsmanship of its builders, the Nabataeans. There are unidentified prehistoric remains in the city, but the first known inhabitants were the Edomites, who lived here around 1000 BC. According to the Bible, they were descendants of Esau, and references in Genesis to a place called Sela almost certainly refer to Petra. The Edomites were defeated by King Amaziah of Judea, who ordered 10,000 captives to be killed by throwing them from the top of a cliff. The tomb of Moses' brother, Aaron, is supposed to be on the hill above Petra. By the 4th century BC, Petra was inhabited by the Nabataeans, an Arab tribe that carved many of the facades of sandstone buildings and lived in numerous caves around the city. Petra was once a thriving trading center and capital of the Nabataean kingdom. Its strategic location along the caravan routes that carried frankincense, myrrh, and spices from the Arabian Peninsula to the Mediterranean made it a key center for trade and culture. The Nabataeans, renowned for their skills in water conservation, hydraulic engineering, and stone carving, transformed Petra into a thriving metropolis with temples, tombs, and an elaborate system of aqueducts and dams. The most iconic building in the city is the al Khazne Treasury. It is famous for its stunning facade carved out of sandstone rock. This marvel of ancient engineering, believed to have been built in the first century AD, continues to baffle historians and archaeologists, who to this day have no precise explanation for the site. Although called a treasury, the true purpose of this grand structure remains a matter of debate, with some suggesting it may have been a temple or royal tomb. Beyond the treasury, the extensive complex of buildings and tombs at Petra reveals the cosmopolitan nature of its inhabitants. The city's architecture is a mixture of Nabataean, Greek, Roman, and Byzantine styles, reflecting the diverse cultural influences that have shaped it. The monastery, another of Petra's architectural wonders, sits atop a mountain and requires a climb of over 800 steps. Its monumental size and detailed facade rival those of the treasury. Despite its grandeur, Petra was eventually abandoned and its once bustling streets declined. The city was lost to the Western world until its rediscovery in 1812 
by the Swiss explorer Johann Ludwig Burckhardt. This rediscovery marked the beginning of Petra's transformation into an archaeological and tourist destination. A link to our detailed episode about the discovery and history of Petra can be found in the description of this video. Today, the ruins of the city provide an opportunity to learn about its legendary past. The Sikh, a narrow gorge leading to Petra, sets the scene for the awe-inspiring view of the treasure chamber that opens at its end. The street, filled with facades and dotted with tombs and houses, as well as the Roman-style theater, which held over 3,000 spectators, are further evidence of the city's historical importance. However, much of Petra's past remains a mystery. The city's complex water system that allowed it to develop in the desert, its elaborate tombs and temples, and the daily life of its people continue to fascinate and puzzle researchers. Archaeological excavations and explorations continue and are slowly unraveling the mysteries of this ancient wonder. Hoyabacu Forest, Romania the Hoyabachu Forest, located near the town of Cluj-Napoca in northern Romania, is shrouded in mystery and paranormal phenomena. It is a place that many consider to be a portal to another dimension. Visitors to the area report strange sensations such as being seen, loss of time orientation, rashes, headaches, nausea, burns, and scratches. There have been reports of people who have experienced strong emotional stirrings associated with memories of the past, but these disappear once they leave the forest. On the outskirts of the Hoya Bachu forest, strange phenomena such as the appearance of aliens and flying saucers have been observed. Visitors and locals alike report hearing children and women laughing from the forest and making their blood to freeze. Photographs taken in the forest show mysterious ghostly silhouettes, which greatly enhances the ominous image of the place. Interest in the forest emerged in the 1960s, when biologist Alexander Swift spent a decade in the forest and documented his observations of paranormal phenomena. He described his stay as a period of fear, panic, and unpleasant sensations accompanied by strange sounds and voices. To speak to his desire to leave, the biologist says it was as if something kept him there. On August 18, 1968, military man Emile Barnett witnessed a UFO in the woods. He documented his encounter with this object through photographs that are considered some of the clearest images of UFOs in Europe. These photographs have been reviewed and recognized as authentic by numerous experts. The Hoya Bachu Forest is also known for its unusual trees, that grow in a spiral shape or with unusual curves. Some of the trees are more than 200 years old but look like young saplings. Scientists still cannot explain this phenomenon. According to local legend, the forest is home to the demon Belial, an ancient Eastern European symbol of destruction and fear. Stories of disappearances and strange encounters are part of the mythology of the forest. According to one of them, a girl of five disappears in the forest and returns after five years without having aged a day. She has no memories of her disappearance until she is found. There are stories of other disappearances and strange encounters that also remain unexplained. According to research, the radioactivity in the forest is higher than usual due to the uranium contained in the soil. This fact may contribute to some of the strange phenomena observed. The Hoja Bachu Forest known as the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania, continues to be a subject of research and speculation. Despite scientific attempts to explain it, many phenomena remain a mystery, making this place one of the most enigmatic spots on planet Earth. Let us know what you think of it all in the comments. Continue your adventure by watching our playlists, and if you want more, just play the next episode that comes up as a suggestion on your left.